What's good? It's your boy Fanon. Okay, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite subjects I haven't talked about in a while and didn't get a chance to make a video about after Tevin Farmer beat Billy Dibb for the IBF. I do believe that that was for the IBF 130-pound title, that that sets up a unification fight, hopefully, between the WBA super 130-pound champion, Gervonta Davis, who was the former uh, IBF champion as well, against Tevin Farm to, for unification. Now, I don't personally think that that's going to be a tremendously competitive fight. <laughs> I like Tevin Farmer, but I have Javante Davis being uh, winning that fight. I have Javante Davis uh, winning that fight spectacularly. Uh, at, could be a few rounds of some interesting work going on there because Tevin Farmer is a he is a very talented boxer, and he's just very very he's slick. He's got some of the best defense, like natural. Uh, natural defensive ability that I've seen in a boxer uh, that's in, that is active right now. And there's a lot of things that I really like about Tevin Farmer. I just don't think that Tevin Farmer has the power to keep Gervonta Davis off of him. And I think that Gervonta Davis really is a special type of talent and that he's going to win that fight. Uh, but, also, but I want to talk about that briefly and then just talk about the fact that I think that if that after that fight happens, it will give uh, Gervonta Davis a distinct accomplishment as far as active fighters goes and what that a win over Tevin Farmer would mean for where he should be considered amongst the uh, other champions throughout throughout boxing. Now, before I do that, and the short of it is, is I think that I think that Gervonta Davis is on his way to being, he could be within the next few years. If he, if thing if he's able to accomplish what I think he can accomplish, I think he's got a chance to be the next big, you know, guy that ha people have to recognize as the pound for pound best guy in boxing, because what he's done so far at the age of 23, I think he turns 24. If he beats Tevin Farmer, having won the IBF belt twice and having won the WBA super title. If he can get in a fight with Machado or excuse me, not Machado, but with, um, if he can get a, a fight in with Miguel Burchelt, he could be one of the most accomplished guys in boxing before the age of 25. And that would be heading into the lightweight division. Uh, so I'll talk about that in some detail, but uh, first I want to say thank you to everybody that is watching the video. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in and thank you for supporting the channel uh, by subscribing and watching the videos and the live streams. And if you're not subscribed and you're listening to the video, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can know when we have this discussion again. Uh, when we release videos and also when we have the the live streams, we have very, very good live streams uh, with very mature boxing fans and, and knowledgeable boxing fans in the live stream. And I would hope that you'd accept my invitation to attend. Thank you to everybody that supports the channel by watching the videos. I know I put ads in the videos. Uh, thank you very much for watching the videos. Uh, thank you also for uh, people that donate in the Venmo and the uh, and the super chats in the live streams is much appreciated help and a lot of help in supporting the cause that we uh, established a channel for. Now, Javante Davis is, I have, this is a case, Javante Davis with me is a case of somebody that I really did get on pretty heavily. You can look at some of the videos that I did before where after he had been, uh, got into that issue with, uh, the battery charge in, uh, in, in Maryland, uh, Baltimore, and also when he got stripped. Before that, he was stripped of his IBF title because he uh, missed weight on the scale when he fought. Uh, God, was it? I think he just fought Quaylar, so maybe it was Francisco Fonseca. Uh, fight that he got stripped because he missed weight. I just thought that the kid and the kind of wild antics that he was doing in the ring. Um, taunting people after they got knocked down, all that kind of stuff. I thought that he was really coming apart, maybe, you know, coming apart a good bit, man. And I was very, very hard on him. But after having watched how he looked in his last fight with 
with uh, Jesus Cuellar. Man, I'm, he looked absolutely fantastic. This kid is, I think he's 20 and 0 with 19 knockouts. He's now won the IBF belt twice. He's won the WBA belt. And I don't think that there's anybody in 130 pounds that can beat him. I don't think that Tevin Farmer can beat him. I don't believe that Ito can beat him, the WBO champion. And I don't think Miguel Burchell can beat him. I know I used to think that that it would be a good fight between Miguel Burchell, he and Miguel Burchell. But I mean, Miguel Burchell's last fight, I know he was coming off of an injury, but he just didn't look very good to me. Same thing went for uh, Alberto Machado. Alberto Machado, and it, I'll put a little caveat here. I think that he should, the reason I mentioned Alberto Machado, I know that Alberto Machado, uh, Machado does not have a major belt, but the way in which Gervonta Davis won his his WBA super title and the way that Alberto Machado won his WBA regular title by beating uh, uh, Corrales, who was the super champion. But for some reason, Alberto Machado wound up fighting for the regular title. And then the WBA had the super title vacant. But then Gervonta Davis fought uh, Quaylar, and then he became the WBA super champion. I didn't like how that went down. I made a video about it. I don't think that's Gervonta Davis's fault, right? But I think it's a real thing where Gervonta Davis has business to settle with Alberto Machado before I can just full-fledged say, yeah, he is the man for the WBA title. Because, you know, and I don't think that in order to say somebody has the has the belt, you can win a vacant belt for wealth, for belts other than the heavyweight title, Right. I mean, the heavyweight title because fighters do move up. So the fight, the title wasn't vacant because somebody moved up in weight from super featherweight to lightweight or junior lightweight to lightweight. It was because um, uh, Giselle Corrales missed weight on the scale. And that's why it wound up being vacant. However, because Alberto Machado beat uh, won the fight. I think he should have been the super champion, but at least there's an argument between who the champion is between Gervonta Davis and Alberto Machado. But anyway, it goes. If that fight happens, I think that he can that he would beat Alberto Machado. I think Gervonta Davis would beat Ito and I think he would beat Miguel Burchelt. Now, there's a there's a difference from saying I think he can do it from then he did do it. You know, I'm not one of these guys are going to think just because I can look at us. I can look at the bread, the spreadsheet. Shout out to blood boxing. I can look at the spreadsheet and say, well, you know, I think that Vasil Lomachenko will beat Ray Beltran. So Ray. So Vasil Lomachenko is the man. Right. At lightweight. Well, he hasn't actually fought Ray Beltran and things happen in the ring. So I think that he needs to actually fight him before you know what the outcome of the fight would be. And if two people fight more than one time. You know, you can get different outcomes in the fight, right? Just, you know, that's just the nature of the sport. So when I'm saying I think Gervonta Davis really can set himself apart, it it does hinge on him actually having those fights. But from what I see of him, I think that the Tevin Farmer fight is next because that's the fight that he said he wanted. If he beats Tevin Farmer, then he's the WBA and the IBF champion. So he's probably the youngest. I think that would make him the youngest unified champion in boxing because there's not that many unified champions in boxing, unfortunately. There's uh, Anthony Joshua, who's, I think he's about to turn 29. Of course, Alexander Usyk at cruiserweight holds is the only undisputed, and he's like 31. Um, There is no unified at 168. Uh, the one, the one, the middleweight unified champion is is Gennady Golovkin, and he's p- pushing up over thirty. I don't recall one hundred fifty four. I need. I'm not quite sure how old J- Jared Hurd is, but I think Jared Hurd is in his late twenties. Uh, is in his late twenties. I do believe he's older than twenty four years old. There is no unified at one forty seven. There is no unified at one forty. There is no there is a unified at 135, and that's Mikey Garcia, and he's 30. Right? Then there's there would be Gervonta Davis. Gervonta Davis, I do believe, might even be the second youngest champion that there is. And even if and then as we go down, I'm not gonna go through all of like the 115, 112 pounders, 108 pounders, but 
there aren't any unified champions down at those lower weight classes, uh, regardless. Menelothium at at uh isn't at 105 pounds. So that is something that Gervonta Davis can do to set himself apart. But even if he does what I've heard that he wants to do, which is go up to lightweight, I think at lightweight he's got a really good chance to really set himself apart too. Mikey Garcia more than likely is going to vacate, uh, trying to go up to 147 pounds. I don't know how long he is for that anyway. But, you know, if as... Javante Davis's body matures. I think he's somebody that is going to wind up at 135 pounds. If he can unify at 130 pounds and then go up and win a belt, uh, whether that be the WBA belt uh, or more than likely, yeah, if he can win the WBA belt over Omachenko, he's number one pound for pound flat out. Or if he can get one of the belts that is going to eventually be vacated by Mikey Garcia, man, that would be, you know, he would... And hopefully it's vacated by Mikey Garcia and then won by somebody else, right? Then he can actually win a championship at 135. And the future looks bright for him. And if he does something like that, that dude's got to be considered. At that age, um, with that knockout ratio, with that level of talent, he's going to have to be considered one of the pound-for-pound best guys in boxing. Right now, he's not getting that respect because of, you know, because of, Though he has won a champion, he won his first belt off Jose Pedraza, off, off Pedraza, and then he won the second one off of Quaylar. So he didn't actually win his belts off the best guys. But when you unify, you get up over 20, 23, 24 fights undefeated, and with a bunch of knockout ratings, you move up in weight class and you beat somebody up there, man, eventually you're going to have to start getting that type of respect. And that's the type of th- stuff that I'm looking out, looking for out of Gervonta Davis. I think already that for me, he's one of the most talented boxers in the world. Um, and if he catches Vasil Lomachenko at the right time under the right c- circumstances, he might be able to get uh, Vasil Lomachenko. Vasil, that hand speed and that punching power – is something to be worried about from any boxer, especially if if he if he matures. So we'll see. And with that, I'm out. Peace. <laughs>